the first time this season, I think we could go down. Welcome to the stage, the best football team on planet Earth. Alright mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another video here on Spencer FC channel. We've got a special vlog for you today. What I want to start doing is not necessarily weekly vlogs, but putting a lot of what I get up to in vlogs and making them kind of multi-dimensional. So we're going to start off with going to the West Ham Brighton game, which is tonight. This is a Friday night as I'm making this. It's the first Friday night game of the season. It's a big game for us because we should really be beating Brighton at home, no disrespect to them. And if we don't beat them, I think Billings will come under some pressure, especially considering we didn't get the win against Burnley recently with the Andy Carroll red card and all that. So no Andy Carroll tonight, but we should have a good enough team to beat Brighton. I'm also going to take you with me to another West Ham game in a couple of days. I'm going to go to West Ham versus Spurs, or I should say Spurs versus West Ham at Wembley. Uh, first time going back to Wembley since I got the Wembley Cup hat trick, come on. And obviously that's a big one, that's the League Cup. And I think we might have a chance of upsetting them there, purely because they're probably not going to play their full team. They're playing a lot of games at the moment with the Champions League and whatnot. They shouldn't be full strength. Obviously, by the time this video goes out, you guys know the result from both the Brighton and the Spurs game. I do not know it as I'm recording this right now, so I'm a bit nervous. But hopefully, West Ham have picked up a couple of wins. That would be massive for us. And also, in between, I'm going to try and take you with me to the uh, FIFA Best Awards I'm going to in a couple of days as well, before the West Ham Tottenham game, which is massive. That's where they crown, you know, the... Uh, the Ballon d'Or winner and the uh, the best team of the year, all that sort of stuff. Ronaldo should be there, Messi should be there. It's in London, it's a black tie event. So we're gonna go to that as well. So lots to look forward to this vlog. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Drop a like if you are, and let's go to West Ham Brighton. Come on you irons. Right, just on the way to the station, old LP's give me a lift. Obviously fellow hammer. Lou, what do you think about tonight? Think we can get the win? Oh, you have to always be positive, I think personally. Um, I'm gonna predict the two one win to West Ham United yeah? tonight. That's what Fair I'm going. If we don't get it and we don't play well, should Billich go? I feel like it's Billich's time. He needs to go now. His time really? is up. Really? That's what I think. Yeah. Didn't realise you were Billich out. Yeah. I'm Billich in for the time being. I'm still Billich in. Just because I don't know if there's a viable alternative. But you never know. We've only really, in my opinion, had one really bad performance this season. It was against Newcastle. Everything else. I wouldn't say we've been good. I wouldn't say we've been good. We haven't hit the ground running. Chicharito hasn't got started. Loads of people haven't got started. But we haven't been bad. We haven't been awful. There's been teams that have been a lot worse than us in the league. If we win tonight, not just like a, a dodgy little 1-0 nicked goal, a decent home performance, hopefully a couple of goals. I'd love a 2-0 win. Mm -hmm. If we can do that, everything's coming up Millhouse. Right, just met up with some of the guys before the game. A quick pre-match prediction. We've got Phil Martin, Ladink. Phil, what are you saying? I think we're going to win 2-1. We'll concede, we'll concede early, but I do fancy that we'll win 2-1. We'll take that. Stevie, Steve Lee, what are you saying? I'm going for 1-0. Nice. Dad, what are you saying? What are you saying? One all. Oh, really? Pretty realistic, to be fair. Seb? Clean sheet again, ran a few recently. We're going to get a job done tonight. It's the formation, the way to play. Chikorita to score two. Ooh, come on. Right, the team's out. It's looking pretty decent. Obviously, no Andy Carroll, but... We have got, I think it's like a 4-2-3-1. We've got Kiate and Obiang holding. I think we're going to have Lanzini ahead. And then we'll have, on the wide, Antonio and Onaltovic with Hernandez up front. He's carrying a bit of a knock, but he's okay, which is good. Um, it's a solid team, to be honest. The only person missing is Carroll, but we changed the way we play when we have Andy Carroll. So maybe it's best if we don't have him in there. Are you on the bench? Uh, in defence, we've got Reed and Font at centre-back. Masayaku, a left-back over Cresswell. And Zabaleta right-back, obviously, Joe Hart in goal. I'm, I'm, I don't mind that team. We should be able to win this game. Just got to do the business. Confirmation of the lineups then, as I told you. All the boys are there. Brighton, let's talk about Brighton, Australian goalkeeper. Uh, Anthony Notcart, supposed to be decent. I think he had a good year last year. Gross, obviously he's been getting some goals. Glenn Murray's there, Andy Carroll basically, isn't he? Uh, David Propp is supposed to be decent. Shane Duffy, who have they got on the bench? Tim Krull, Solly March. I know this guy can play, young winger. Hopefully he doesn't get too much game time, because I worry about him. We've got RU. Really, anyone else going to change the game in an attacking sense for us? Probably not. Are you the one that could change the game for us if we need him to? Let's get out there. Come on, what's that? Oh, James, oh, I Let's go! 
Are you kidding me? Such a weak goal to concede. Free kick delivered into the box, headed in. We've been Andy Carroll ourselves there. Such a weak goal to concede. What's that? Ten minutes in. One nil down to Brighton at home. They've had all the ball. They're bossing us for possession. It's embarrassing. What's going on? Honestly, if it stays like this, Slavin has gone. Right, it's got a little bit better since the goal. We've had a few chances. We've just missed a good chance to fell to us in the box there. But we can't afford it to be one of those games that drags on and we struggle to get the equaliser. We need to get it soon. And then we can go on and win the game. But we need to get it soon. Go on, corner. Bang it! Hit it! Hit it! Ref! Oh, oh, Try to get a penalty. No luck. Absolute joke. Absolute joke. We've been all over them, but then there was a couple of chances in the last two minutes of the first half. One was saved by Joe Hartwell, the second one, it was a decent strike. Joe did get a hand to it, should he have saved it? I don't know, I'd like to see a replay to be fair. He made a great save seconds before, but we're 2-0 down. We're 2-0 down to Brighton at home. This is awful, and I'm telling you right now, this is Billish's last game as our manager. Unless we have a massive second half, there's no way of staying on. I am seriously concerned as to whether we're either fit enough or have the work rate required to cover this pitch. We're not making the... When they counter, they counter with their whole team running out. And then they get back to defend, back to the wall. When we have to defend, everyone's struggling to get back. And then we're attacking the other end and the midfield aren't supporting the strikers. I'm struggling to watch this, guys. It's, it's awful. Seb, what's going on? I don't know, mate. I mean, I'm really disappointed. This is the formation I've been waiting for us to play all year. Maybe... I, I like Andy Carroll, but I'd like to see Hernandez on his own up front. We've done Altovic and uh, Lanzini and Antonio in and around him. And it's just a shambles. Right, this is a, by the way, it's sold out today, everywhere's full. All these seats behind me are people that have gone in for half time early because they're sick of what they're seeing. Like, this is a sold out stadium today. It's just gone half time now and we're losing 2 0 to Brighton. This is diabolical. Right, second half underway. <laughs> we need a big 45 minutes, guys, or else this place is going to kick off. It's going to be ugly. I'm going to say two dangerous words big sand. He doesn't want to manage clubs. If we can't, we can't get Big Sam back in. It's too much of a negative. But also, he doesn't want to manage teams. I think he's going to get the USA job, personally. I think he'll go to America. He'd love it over there. He'll go to America. He'll get even bigger. He would love it. Over there. Meanwhile, we need a new manager. We need some actual players with some balls to get stuck in and work a bit harder. Maybe we need Andre Ayew as well. This game, get him on. I don't know. We need something. Scott Pollock. It's free agent. Scott Pollock needs to play for us now. Got a penalty. Now Belletta just giving away a penalty. They're going to go three 0 up. I just said to Seb a second ago. Oh, I think for the first time this season, I think we could go down. Based on this performance, with almost our full team at home against Brighton, newly promoted, we're getting mugged off. Oh, I think we could get relegated. I didn't think that at all before tonight. Not good. And they're going to score this. They're going to go three 0 up. Even if we save it, what does it even mean? Shocking. There it is. One of the worst home games I've ever seen. One of the worst West Ham performances. I am worried for us. This vlog started off very optimistic and now I am dreading the next West Ham home game. Right, I'm out of the stadium now, walking to meet Man's dog. And I've got to say, I'm fuming. I'm absolutely fuming. I've always been optimistic. You've seen these vlogs. Always trying to look on the bright side. There's no bright side there, guys. That's just awful. That's terrible. Right, I'm at Man's dog's now, guys. And the thing is, right... <sighs> As I said, I've always been an optimistic fan and I'll try and look on the bright side, but what that performance showed me is that Billish's West Ham have now got to a point where they're, they're undefendable. You can't, you can't defend them. Indefensible, I think is the word. They're indefensible. And ironically, they also can't defend. Like, it's funny because Billich, if you don't know this, he was a centre-back. He was a pretty tough tackling centre-back. His next in command, so, well, one of his coaches at least, at West Ham is Julian Dix, another tough tackling sort of left-back defender was synonymous with the hard tackling West Ham team of the 90s. So we've got two supposed defensive experts coaching our team. And we can't defend a simple set piece. That's how they got their first goal. And they were cutting us apart, one-on-ones, everything. We, we just looked completely null and void and just absolutely absent of any defending ability. And it's obviously not working that well on the attacking side either, is it? Because we can't score a goal. So you've got to ask yourself, I do think the problem is bigger than Bilic. I think we've got an attitude problem at the club right now. I think we've brought in some personalities, some Hernandez, some Anatoviches that think they're not necessarily better than they are, but I think they're bigger than the manager, bigger than the club. The only person that's come in that I think really impressed me is Zabaleta. I love him, I love his attitude. He's already a West Ham cult hero. Joe Hart is getting better, but it's still not the Joe Hart of old. But, yeah, 
There's a, there's a few egos at the club right now. Maybe we need a bigger ego manager to deal with them. I don't know. I think he's got to go. I think he's got to go. We need to replace him. I don't know who with, but as I said, this vlog's going to continue and you're going to see me go to another game and a few other bits. I'm hoping the game at Wembley next week is, is a better one. Because if we get smashed again, it's just going to be awful. We might have a new manager by then. We might have a caretaker manager. I don't know who it would be. Who knows? I'll be surprised if when I go to Wembley, Billich is still the manager though. Watch this space. Anyway, I'm here with Manage Dog now. Obviously an Arsenal fan. You're not having a great time of it at the moment, but no, surely you, no. it's not as bad as West Ham, is it? Yeah, I watched it on telly here. Uh, it wasn't great. I thought that... I know it just lacks a bit of desire, a bit of hunger. Yeah, um, There's totally. a few individual errors, like Joe Hart, they've said on the uh, half-time. You know, second goal. So my, my view on the second goal, I was sort of behind where the ball was hit. Uh, I thought it looked like a good strike. He yeah. got a finger to it, though. Should he have saved it? In commentary, they said, oh, great hit. But then at half-time, they showed a few different angles. He's just His, his feet were planted, didn't yeah. really move. AJW, he'll tell you how to save that goal. I do feel like a little bit like Joe Hart. I said the service at the game, right? Usually keepers, when they hit sort of Joe Hart's age, about 30, in their prime, he was a great keeper for Man City for a couple of years. Won the league twice, and two or three times the most clean sheets in the league. And so it's happened to him. He's, he's lost it. I don't think he's terrible. He's probably better than, at least as good as Adrian, but he's not the Joe Hart of old. I wonder if when um, Pep came in at Man City and kind of just completely disregarded him, said you can't, you're not good enough footballer to play with us, I think he's got in his head. I think he's mentally got him. He's, he's yeah, broken. He's, belie he's believing it now. So maybe it's a bit of that. They were saying that with Pyre and all that, the team was better than the individuals, and now the individuals on paper are better than the team. They, yeah. should, should, they should be doing more, given their reputation. Well, what I'm worried about, we had a team a few years ago when I was younger, which was said it was too good to go down. We had like Joe Cole, we had Canute, I think we had uh, De Canio, uh, uh, people like this, Michael Carrick, Jermaine Defoe. I think they're all in the same team at one point, we got relegated. And everyone just couldn't believe it, too good to go down. That team was better than this team. This team is definitely not too good to go down. On paper, it should be. But right now, for the first time, I think West Ham could get relegated. Mm. I never fought it before. But on that performance, losing at home to a team of players who, with all due respect to them, were in the championship last year, not even scoring a goal, it's embarrassing, it's worrying, it needs to, it needs to change quick or we're in trouble. Right, guys, it's a few days later now. As you can see, I'm in very different attire. Alex behind me. And uh, we've gone from watching some of the worst football played to some of the best football being recognised because we're going to the FIFA Best Football Awards and we're going to see who wins the, the famous you know, Player of the Year award. Will it be Ronaldo? He's the favourite for sure. Who's going to be in the Team of the Year? Has huge repercussions on FIFA of course and all sorts of awards and we're going to be uh, mixing it up with some of the big boys tonight. Let's see what Alex is saying. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Ready for these awards? Yeah, I'm really excited actually. Should we get in there? Yeah, let's do it. Is that where we're going in there? Oh, Ooh, those lights. Come on. Well, that's first thing you recognise for being the best left back on YouTube. Hey! Did you see those green carpets of a red carpet? It's still a football pitch. Clever! Guys, you've got to see who's behind me right now. You know the Ronaldo vs Ronaldo series. Willie's here. Check him out. Look who's here! Hi! Right. Have <laughs> <laughs> you got something? Check your picture. He asked us to do some pose. I'm not quite sure about it, but I love it. I think I got it. Oh, it's blurring. He's looking away a bit. It's not the best. This is the focusing, but I think that's because the focus is the, the focus. Photo is literally out of focus. <laughs> Here we are in the auditorium where everyone will be sitting soon. Luka Modric, then they're getting talked to by Kay Murray. What's Luca got to say for himself, I wonder? Yes, uh, I'm guessing... To be here and, uh, where, do you know where Luka Modric is from? Yes, yeah, Serbia. Close. Where? Keep trying. Um, you might have to like, check where he's from. Czech Republic. He's not from the Czech Republic. <laughs> That's embarrassing for you. <laughs> Seb's mugged himself off. Anyway, Luka Modric from Croatia. He's probably going to be in the team of the year. Almost certainly. That's why he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President of FIFA,
My English is very bad. <laughs> FIFA goalkeeper 2017 is Welcome to the stage, the best football team on planet Earth. FIFA Best Awards. I enjoyed it, it was great to be there, great to be invited. Thanks to FIFA for having myself, Alex and Seb. Um, in general, I thought Ronaldo would win it, he did of course. I didn't think Giroud goal should have got best goal. I would have given it to the guy who did the long range volley from the halfway line, I think that was incredible. There's actually a few goals I would have gone ahead of Giroud. I thought the Giroud goal was great, but I thought the goalkeeper overhead kick was great. Anyway, there were some other good goals. However, the only real controversial thing I think for the night is, I love him, but Iniesta should not have been in the team of the year. For me, that should have been Kante. Won the Premier League twice with two clubs. One of them a relegation favourite. And he won it with Leicester as well. I'm joking, obviously. I mean, Leicester and Chelsea. Um, I think he should have been in there. I think Iniesta has been great. I think he's been in lots of team of the years for a long time now. But did he have that good a year last year? Did he have a better year than Kante? Is he a, a better footballer than Kante in his prime? Probably. But in terms of the last 12 months, Kante has had a better year, in my opinion. Um, I think next year, we could see the likes of Harry Kane. David De Gea, uh, Kevin De Bruyne from the Premier League in the, in the best team of the year. But that is the team of the year. It's, it's a little bit same. It's a little bit Spain-based. Uh, no Bundesliga player in there this year either. Only some Serie A boys and some La Liga boys. Interesting. We'll see if that changes in the future. I think the tide is turning. Premier League teams doing better in the Champions League right now. Could even see a different winner coming soon. A non-Spanish winner, perhaps. First time for a while. It's exciting times to be a football fan. But anyway, it's good, good, good awards. I enjoyed it. And uh, let's move on with the vlog. So we fast forwarded a few days and it's time for another West Ham match. I am now on the way walking to Wembley Stadium. First time back here since the big Wembley Cup win. I'm hoping some of my Wembley luck can rub off on the West Ham boys tonight because I've got a good record here, obviously. I'm not used to coming to Wembley as an away team. Feels a little bit weird. Feels like West Ham Tottenham is a bit of a rivalry as well, you know, so I've got to be careful. But um, the guys from EE have invited me and Seb here tonight. Now, I said I'm always an optimist, but I'm a pragmatic optimist as well, and realistically, we cannot expect to get anything from this game. If we do, it'll be a miracle. All depends on the Tottenham team. If they put out a weak team, we might have a chance. It could boost our season after that terrible result last week against Brighton. But realistically, I'm a sucker for pain and I think we're more likely to get smashed. Hope I'm wrong. We'll get inside now and see what West Ham can do to prove me wrong, but I'm not hopeful. Right, I've just checked the starting lineups on my phone and Tottenham's team isn't as weak as I'd have liked it to be. Harry Kane isn't starting though, which is a plus, but they've got some good players out. They've got likes of Son, they've got likes of Alderweireld, they've got Udaya, they've got... It's not 
they haven't really got that weaker team if they put their weakest players out, to be honest. They're a good side, good squad. Us, we've got Andy Carroll up top, Mo Hernandez, I can see in the starting lineup. Uh, Declan Rice, the youngsters playing, Adrian's in instead of Joe Hart. So we have changed things, but let's face it, our first team got smashed by Brighton last Friday, so these lot can't do any worse than them. Let's see what happens, get inside. So regardless of what happens tonight, uh, result-wise, one of the benefits is I'm getting to go in the EE box, which is going to be very swanky. One thing I will say, though, I'm not sure about Wembley here is, I love Wembley, I love coming to Wembley, playing, obviously, and coming to watch England and whatnot, cup finals, but unless you're a Spurs fan, I don't feel like it's a nice vibe coming, seeing it at the Spurs home stadium, I know it's just for this season, seeing the Spurs, like, shirts up on the wall and all this sort of thing, like, doesn't feel right, this is England's home, shouldn't be a club here, but... Fair play to Spurs. If West Ham were here for the year while we're waiting for our stage, I'll be buzzing with that. So fair play to it. But hopefully we can beat them in their own backyard today. I'm not sure if we will. Right, I've arrived in the box. Still got 25 minutes for kickoff. But as you can see, this top tier is not open for the uh, this particular game, the Capital One Cup, or as it's now called the Carabao Cup. And interesting fact: last time Tottenham played in this cup, obviously at Wembley, and obviously they won. They had less people in this stadium than what we had for the Wembley Cup final. That is mental. 34,000 we had, which was this whole area filled up, all of this, and some of this as well, filled up for the Wembley Cup. Unbelievable, Jeff. Anyway, I'm expecting a few more people to fill up here for this match, but I reckon it might be less than what we had again, you know? 34,000 is hard, hard to beat. And let's be honest, not a lot of teams are taking the Carabao Cup seriously. Tottenham have got bigger fish to fry in the Champions League, in the league. West Ham need a win anywhere we can get one though. Right, interesting fact about this EE box is the same room we filmed the FIFA tournament in Series 1 of the Wembley Cup, which Annie St Gibb won, and then he played Andros Townsend, and then he ended up starting in the Wembley Cup first ever final because he won that tournament. So that was in this room, which we turned into a FIFA room for the day. And now, obviously, he's back in his normal guys as a box with Wembley outside. Decent! Programme for tonight. Meanwhile, Leicester have appointed Claude Puel as the new manager. Interesting. What's on the menu? Lamb, vegetable hot pot. All looks very decent to me. Half time, 3 0 to West Ham. Look at that. Sebi, what are you saying? Is it decent? It's decent. It's not often we get to see West Ham play at Wembley. I think last time was the playoff final which we won against Blackpool. So guys, I think I've just worked out a very scary stat. I think I'm right in saying in my lifetime, West Ham have played at Wembley, this Wembley, twice, and I've played here four times. That's including tonight, by the way. That includes tonight. I've played it twice as many times as West Ham have played since I was born. Embarrassing, really. Well, that didn't take long. with the goal, five minutes gone. This could be an absolute mauling, guys. I don't know why we keep doing it to ourselves. Sebi, what's going on, mate? No idea, mate. It's absolutely depressing. It was bad enough on Friday night. <coughs> you thought coming here, League Cup, chance to really change it, change the team up a little bit. Spurs have rested some players. They've also had the worst fixtures ever just before this game and the worst fixtures ever after this. I thought... We yeah, Real Madrid and Liverpool have been playing. I know. And They've been like, playing bloody Brighton. And I thought this was a chance for us to really kickstart the season, but not only have we not done that and we're going to get hammered, but it looks like there's just no life. At all. Right, I'm not going to hold you to this. I'm not going to say you're not a good West Ham fan if you say the, the negative answer to this. But as a betting man, yeah. are West Ham going to get relegated? Oh, crikey. I'd love to see the odds. Um, the way I feel right now, I could easily say yes to that question. But 
If I, if I was a betting man, um, I would say probably no, but it's getting close. Mm. Village has to go, I think. I don't mind having Village. Who'd but you get in? Yeah, he has to go. I mean, the guy would probably would be Mancini. He's available. Mancini. Interesting. Interesting. Come on, West Ham! We've scored! It's 2 1 Sebi! We can do it! Can we do it? Can we do it? Maybe! Okay! Guys, it's 2 1. It's possible. Like, we've not we've not been in the same game as them. We're not anywhere near as good as them. But these things happen in football. We could nick a result. They do not like us supporting West Ham over there. Oi, we're all away guys, we're all away. You don't live here either. Calm down mate. Three two boys, it's three two! These Tottenham fans over here are not happy. They are not happy. They're kicking off, they're throwing beers. It's three two to West Ham, you bite your back! Mate, you think a wrong word, salty. Oh uh, boys, what's going on? Wait, we haven't even done these subs. It's literally the same people that are playing in the first half and were terrible. We're now decent at football, boys. Come on! Christian Eriksen coming on. He's a decent player. He could cause us problems. Just over 10 minutes left. Come on, lads. Hold on, please. Free kick for Spurs. Oh! We're in added time right now. Andy Carroll's basically playing centre back. I have to say, at this moment in time, we're defending really well. It's back to the wall. Can we do it, Seb? We can do it. We're going to do this now. We're we'll back to two years ago defending. It's mad fantastic. It's literally a minute left, two minutes max. Oh, no, no, no. Three, I think. Three. No! Oh my Andy god. Carroll picked it away. Get it out! Andy yeah, Carroll! Andy Carroll again! First fans are leaving. They're all leaving. They know they've been knocked out in their home ground. It's hashtag home ground, so you realise that's better. We've won it more times than Spurs, though. Fact. Well, I have at least, anyway. Blow the whistle, ref. Be a good boy. Be a good boy. Ref, blow the whistle, man! Get it out! Get rid of it! Blow the whistle, ref! Get out! What are you doing? Why are you not kicking it? Well, when the whistle goes, we celebrate. The Spurs fans over there. Will not be happy with us, trust me. They threw a bottle at someone earlier. Threw a load of beer all over someone. They knew it was a West Ham fan. Blow the whistle, ref. Still not playing. Yes. Yes! Yes! Oh! Yes! The win for West Ham at Wembley. There's the West Ham fans over there. All the Spurs fans have gone. But there's the West Ham fans. We've won. And there's a couple here as well, Sebi, boy. Come on, come on. Unbelievable win. We don't take L's at Wembley. West Ham, hashtag, we don't take L's at Wembley. Well guys, that is a massive win for West Ham. It's exactly what we needed. You know, I'm not gonna lie, after that Brighton game, you've seen it in this vlog, I was Billich out, I was ready for him to go. And if they'd got rid of him, I wouldn't have been annoyed by it. They didn't, they stuck by him. And that game, that second half particularly, has showed that the club or the players are willing to play for him. And it's not over under him. So I'm glad we kept him, if we can keep those performances going. But that result's not just big for West Ham, it's big for Billich, like I said. It reinvigorates his time as leader of this club. It's big for the fans. It means next time we go to a game and we're down a few goals, we know we can come back in it. We hadn't seen that sort of comeback for a while. That's big. So everything's looking better. But it isn't a win in the league, and wins in the league are what we need right now to get out of this situation towards the bottom of the table. So I'm hoping we can take that, it invigorate us towards the next game, Crystal Palace, Liverpool, we've got some big games coming up. Get these points, climb up the table, everything's coming up Millhouse. That win is huge. And Spurs, it's not the most important competition to them, but their team was decent tonight. It wasn't their first team, but there were some big boys, and they subbed on the likes of Dembele, they subbed on Ericsson, they brought them on, they wanted to win the game, and they didn't. We stopped time buzzing with that because we don't lose at Wembley. Hashtag West Ham, we get the wins at Wembley. Right guys, back home now, it's a late one, but I don't mind when we win. You know, same with all things, you know, with football, with going to games, with playing games, when you make long journeys, when you stay up late, it's all in much more enjoyable when you win. And if you lose, it's 
twice as bad. So I feel really good right now. I'm feeling really happy. And this vlog's had a bit of everything because she had such low emotions on Friday night after the Brighton game. I was so devastated by that result. I was fuming. You could tell I was fuming. And then tonight, I didn't expect anything. I definitely expected the results to go the other way. I thought we were going to beat Brighton and I thought we were going to lose tonight. So to get that win is huge. And that's what you get when you support a substandard team, at least within the league we're in, in the Premier League. When you get the wins, it feels so much better because you're not expecting them. So that's why it feels good tonight, but it's all about the Premier League. We need to pick up some points. We're still in trouble. I've just seen some promising things tonight that make me think we could be okay. But I'm happy. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. A little bit different. Rather than just a one West Ham game, I've taken you to a couple. I took you to the FIFA Awards as well. Drop a like on the video if you have. Leave a comment below of where you think West Ham are going to finish in the league and whether you think we could win the Carabao Cup, aka the League Cup. It could be good. And like I said earlier, we've got a good record at Wembley. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Until then... Don't go changing. Bye-bye.